and welcome to the Young Social Innovators of the Year Awards 2021. I'm Zara King and I'm delighted to be back hosting these awards again, celebrating thousands of young people who have contributed to their communities in creative and inspiring ways over the most challenging of years. Now this year, I have a very special co-host who is no stranger to YSI. It is Mr. Dale Cronin. Dale, welcome to the Virgin Media Television Studios. Thanks so much, Zara. It's, I am delighted to be here. I must say it's a bit of a different YSI experience for me. I'm usually traveling the road each year with the YSI team to host the Speak Out Tour, which is a pretty amazing road trip, I have to say. There's nothing like the energy and the noise of a YSI Speak Out event, and the passion that these young people show for their issues they're tackling is really inspiring. Well, the Speak Out Tour, like most things this year, was a little different, but once again, young people throughout the country proved that no challenge was too big. 220 social innovation projects were completed by some 3,500 teenagers, and almost 200 YSI teams spoke out on the issues you care about, and he did it by video. Let's take a look. Welcome to the YSI Speak Out Virtual Tour. I'm your host, Zara King. We are YSI Blarney and today in this video I, Alex, with the help of our amazing virtual actors are going to be telling you about substance abuse. We hope that with our YSI project and writing letters to the elderly in our local nursing home that we brought a smile to their face and let them know that we're thinking of them during these strange times. We looked at rural migration away from the cities and rural regeneration as a solution to the current housing shortage as well as it being an opportunity to breed new life into declining rural areas. We believe young people need to be educated about what the signs of an unhealthy relationship are so that we can learn how to build and develop healthy relationships and avoid toxic ones. Did you know that in Ireland we produce more than 13 million tonnes of waste every year? Almost 2 million tonnes of this waste go to landfills. Homeless people are not the problem. They are the result of a problem. That's why we can't forget about the voices left on the street. There is a stigma in our society that has stopped boys and men seeking help when they need it most. We would like to see everyone being treated equally, no matter the age, race, gender, sexual orientation, or any other factor. Machinery is a significant source of injuries on the farm. Since 2000, it accounts for 22% of fatalities. You know, I was really gutted that we weren't able to run the live events this year, and I know the YSI team was as well. But looking at that, it's incredible. And the fact it was virtual meant that so many more people were able to see the great work being done all over the country and hear about the issues that you care about. It also shows that nothing is too difficult for you, and you can literally rise to whatever challenge is thrown at you, virtual or otherwise.
definitely the social interaction. Seeing people face to face and talking to each other um, in person is a, a big difference to doing it online. I find the biggest challenge in lockdown is that teenagers became addicted to social media as there was little else to do. This led to teenagers becoming obsessed with getting the perfect body like the ones they see on social media. Not being able to see their friends, their family and just other people in general. In my opinion, I think the biggest challenge is not being able to play on the sport or doing activities. Not being able to go out and meet each other as much and experience new things as since we're young we should be able to experience a lot of things grow as people and not being able to work together in school because ty we would get a lot of trips usually we would get a lot of projects and we'd get to work together but that just wasn't possible this year which made it a challenge but we managed with teams and online learning this year the ysi awards are extra special as young social innovators celebrate its 20th anniversary for the past two decades teenagers in ireland have been taking action on a wide range of social issues sparking meaningful conversation and change and demonstrating that young people can be a powerful force for good within their communities when presented with the challenge and the opportunity in that time, over 6,500 social innovation projects have been created and 19 incredible teams have been awarded the Young Social Innovators of the Year Ireland Gold Award title. From LGBTQI rights to suicide prevention and from cyber safety to consent, accessibility to organ donation, all these winning teams have addressed some of the most pressing and poignant issues of our time. Nineteen incredible winners there and today we'll be finding out which team will be awarded the 20th Young Social Innovators of the Year Ireland title award. But before we do, let's meet two people who know what it's like to win Young Social Innovators. From Cashel Community School in County Tipperary, we have Caitlin Downey and Colin Harding. Hi guys! Oh yeah. How are you keeping? Good, thanks. Yourself? Not too bad, not too bad. So Colin, come here. It was October when you were announced as the overall winner of YSI 2020. How did that feel? I suppose, Dale, it was, it was pure joy. Like It was an amazing honour to receive the gold award last October. Uh, for first of all our school um, but also for our county it was an amazing achievement um, that we did like I suppose it was very exciting the day that we were named um, we were named the gold award and screaming and great chaos in the school Brilliant, brilliant. I am actually, as I'm sure you know, a proud Cashel Community School man myself. So I am absolutely delighted for you. So Colin, tell us a little bit about your winning project and where your idea has gone since. So uh, basically we wanted to create awareness around the misuse um, of accessible car parking spaces. Uh, that was the overall, I suppose, uh, aim of the project. And after doing, you know, lots of research and, you know, meetings together, we decided that we wanted to change and we wanted to try to deter people from using these designated spots. Um, so the only solution, I suppose, was to sit down as a group and, and go through as much as we could. Uh, we developed a basic prototype. Um, it's a device that uh, the device will be activated once the car parks onto the space um, and the driver of the car or the vehicle would have to produce an accessible parking permit um, to turn off the deterrent. Um, so that's the overall, I suppose, project. Um, now the prototype is with the HSE um, and we're hoping that in the future that we'll get future funding uh, to develop the project. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the times that we're in with the pandemic um, has stopped our progress now, uh, the progress of the current TY students. Wow, that's really incredible work, isn't it, Dale? So Amazing. phenomenal. To Amazing. See like we were only saying earlier that like us as teenagers would Different have never story. done that <laughs> ever. So for you to come up with something that amazing is absolutely incredible. And obviously, I have to be a bit biased. Cash Community School is the best school. No, it's phenomenal work. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us, what has this past year been like for you and your friends? Uh, we found the online school very challenging, but um, we were delighted to come back into school and work as a team again and, you know, put our heads down. And how do you feel about passing on the title today? Uh, we're ex excited and there's like lovely memories being made and stuff and we're trying to put our heads down and work as hard as the team did last year. 
Absolutely. And like this work is so important, isn't it? That's what YSI is all about, making that contribution to your community. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us, guys, and all the best for the future. Thank you. Thanks very much. In the past 20 years, over 145,000 young people in Ireland have taken part in YSI. And on this special anniversary, we thought it might be nice to welcome back some of them and to see what they're doing now. Maybe a little less young guys, but probably no less passionate. You are very welcome and thank you for being with us today. How are you getting on, guys? Good, thanks. Good. Good. <laughs> good, good. So, Jackie, I'm going to come to you first. Um, you were part of the Forget Me Not project from Davis College in Mallow. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so many moons ago uh, in 2011, I was involved in the Forget Me Not campaign, which is an awareness campaign for Ireland's missing people. Um, so part of that project, um, one of our main objectives was to establish a National Missing Persons Day. And um, this was through talking to the families of the missing. Um, and we thought that it would really mean a lot to them. So we did this by uh, getting petitions signed and lobbying the government for a National Missing Persons Day. And thankfully, um, we pre presented it to the Oireachtas, they unanimously agreed. And the first National Missing Persons Day was held um, in 2013. So it's on the first Wednesday of every December um, in Ireland now. Wow, I actually have covered that for the news. I've been right. to it many times. I didn't realise that wow. that's where it came from. Yeah, it's Unreal. incredible. Yeah, it's incredible yeah. work. And um, do you think that your experience uh, led you to where you are now? Because as you said, you are now involved in an organisation that funds social innovation ideas. Yeah, definitely. Um, since been involved, being involved with Young Social Innovators, I just always had um, the longing to, to make a change and work in social innovation. So at the moment, I'm working with Rethink Ireland and we provide cash grants and business supports to the social innovations who can make a real difference. Um, so if, if I wasn't involved in YSI, I wouldn't be in, interested in social innovation. And it really just gave me a lot of skills um, that are applicable, applicable to the work that I do now. Um, and it really inspired me and definitely influenced my career. Uh, Kirsty, it's so lovely for you to be here and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tell us a bit about the project you were involved in and the impact it's had on your life. Hi, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I was in Youthreach, I was a student in Youthreach, um, and I wanted to do a project on domestic violence um, called Behind Closed Doors. It was something I was really passionate about, having personal experience on it. And I really just wanted to bring about a change of and stop the stigma of something that was so hidden um, and so I developed the project called Behind Closed Doors and it kind of just went from strength to strength you know I was out in the community speaking out to different organizations about domestic violence and domestic abuse and letting people know that there is help um, and hope for victims of, of domestic abuse. And you're now still working, am I right, in that area of social care. So I mean is, is YSI and the work you did, is that something that drove you into that and had an impact on your long-term career? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I work with Chusla, the Child and Family Agency, and I suppose it definitely led me onto my passion, um, being able to give hope to people, being able to make a difference. And I think, isn't that what YSI is all about? Giving people a voice when sometimes they don't have one, allowing people to speak out about issues that are affecting everyone in communities. Um, so yeah, YSI definitely allowed me to have a belief system in myself to know that I could go on to college and make a difference in other people's lives. And it's incredible to see Kirsty using that sort of day to day yeah. in her work life now, the stuff that she learned during her time at YSI. It's absolutely amazing. Just listening to you now, I'm feeling inspired. Like I think you should have my job here instead of, <laughs> you know, I will swap roles. <laughs> absolutely. She, you speak so well and, yeah. and so clearly and so passionate and it, it's, you can tell you're passionate about what you do and it's absolutely amazing. Well done. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, so Declan, you're joining us next, or Councillor Burgess, I should say. Uh, you're also a former pupil at uh, Cashel Community School. Uh, when did you take part in YSI and what was your project about? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Um, my project was uh, called Do You Want Braille With That? And it was around uh, accessibility for menus with for people who had visu visual impairments. Um, I took part in YSI in 2011. And I suppose um, YSI, you know, it, it provided me with an opportunity to engage with 
a range of stakeholders and uh, community groups on the topic. Um, I suppose, like, I look back at YSI and it, re it really did, um, you know, have a strong positive impact uh, on where I am today. And uh, our project, you know, it started off as a small idea. It was a simple idea just to provide um, accessible menus. So we had Braille, we had clear print, and we had audio uh, menus. And we worked with the National Council of the Blind, the Restaurants Association of Ireland, and our project grew. We, we got it in every restaurant and cafe in our town. And, you know, it, it, it's, it was a project that got a lot of uh, positive feedback and it went further afield. So it was a great project to be involved in. And I certainly uh, learned so much. And when you're a teenager and something like that happens, how does it feel to know that like your work has so much influence at such a young age? Yeah, like I just thought it was incredible. And like, obviously, Young Social Innovators provides, you know, thousands of young people each year with with, with the same opportunities of contributing to social change. And uh, I suppose as a local decision maker now looking back at it, 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 it was there was no one right way to deliver change on a certain topic. Um, but and I always even day to day. Uh, in my role as a county councillor, I look back on the four C's of YSI because our little gang and our group always used to, you know, mess around with the four C's of change, of cooperate, of caring and, and communicating on an issue. And it's something I look back on and try and implement in, in my work today. And as someone who knows what it takes to implement that kind of change, what advice would you give to our teams working on their projects now? Um, I suppose, like in any campaign, in any idea, um, you know, and as cliche as it sounds, teamwork means everything. And innovation and cultural change flourishes with young people being involved in it. And uh, it's vital young people continue to be that positive force for good. And what I'd say is, you know, be involved, be active and, you know, to speak out on issues um, work as a collective and you will get a lot done. Um, you know, and I, I learned all those those abilities and skills through YSI. Absolutely. And it is that point, isn't it? Work as a collective, Dale. It's yes. such a, a key, a key point, especially everyone working in that team environment throughout this yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. And like, you know, fair play. And it's it's a it's amazing for young kids growing up to see that, like, you know, myself and Declan were, were actually in school together. I think you were two years below me, I think. And, you know, like, you know, here you are now and here I am. And, you know, it's it's people don't realise that you can actually make a difference no matter how young you are and I think that's the best thing about YSI is that they're absolutely amazing in supporting your your ideas and, and your decisions and and now look at you. Influencing change. I was thinking that was you Dale I wasn't too sure. <laughs> <laughs> it is me it is me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He still stands so like I, I got the skill of being able to speak and, and Dale got the skill of dancing so. Exactly. Great there, to now, there you go there you, you go. Know. And something for everyone. <laughs> That's it. That's, cheers, Declan. Right, so Megan, you've been patiently waiting. Uh, so you are a TY coordinator in Colossia de Lacey Community School, uh, Ashburn. But you did YSI when you were a student in school. Uh, do you remember your project well? Yeah, I remember my project really well. It was probably the highlight of my transition year experience when I look back on it. So I was a student in Our Ladies College, Green Hills in Drogheda, and I took part in the programme in 2007. So as you mentioned there, I think the, the big thing for me when I was a student was realising the change and the impact that I could have at such a young age. And it was my first experience of really being able to see that as teenagers, there was things that we could do, you know, in our local communities to bring about change. So our project focused on teenagers and what we could do to make a difference in the lives of teenagers in our school and also in our local community. So we took part in lots of different initiatives, um, such as bringing in student cards because students weren't able to avail of student services. So we got student cards for our whole school. So it was small things that really made a difference to us on the ground. And it was my first insight really into what we could do as teenagers and the voice that it gave us. Yeah, like you must have really enjoyed it to have brought it into your TY programme now as a transition year coordinator. Yeah, definitely. Like it was something that 
as a new program coordinator, I really, really wanted to get involved in. I had seen the benefits of it, the skills that I gained, you know, like communication skills, being able to work as part of a team, even things like writing a report. It's all really, really necessary. And without YSI, I wouldn't have experienced that. And it's something that I really wanted to be able to give to the students to be able to experience too. Incredible. And, and this is the first time that Cloche de Lacey is participating. So how did this year's students enjoy being involved? They really, really enjoyed it. I think, especially right now in the pandemic, it's really difficult for TY students to get involved in things, but YSI was really something that they could focus on. So I know during the most recent lockdown, it was something that they were able to do at home and it was, there, it was tangible and they were able to see results. So for example, one of the classes focused on the whole area of mental health and physical health within the pandemic. Um, and once a week they released videos um, so that as a whole school community, they could take part in different physical challenges. So it was something that they were all able to do at home, um, but support each other both, you know, in terms of their mental health, but also in terms of their physical health. And, you know, they're missing so much at the minute, their GAA training and their different sports. So it was a really, really good way to get everybody involved. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely, it's amazing. And guys, thank you so much for being with us here today, especially on this 20th anniversary. And I think it's really incredible, you'll agree with me, to see yes. the impact that YSI has had on all of your lives. Thanks a million. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks folks. The biggest thing I've learned so far, and I think we've all learned, is the importance of planning and planning properly. Most of the time, take how long we think something will take and multiply that by 10 for how long it'll actually take. This year I've learned how important it is to look after myself and my mental health. I also learned how to appreciate a lot of things more than I would have before, because before I would totally just go outside and be like, oh, this is normal. But now I learned to appreciate just being able to even go and walk with my parents because it's not like we have so many restrictions. Um, definitely how to, uh, my online skills have improved with school and um, how, to, how to be grateful for everything that I have when I have the chance to do things. One of the things I think changed the most is all the tiny things that changed with lockdown that you don't never expect. Like the importance of properly washing your hands. I never would have expected that I'd be at the sink singing happy birthday to myself three times just to get my hands washed. But you'd never see that coming. Well, with us now, we have the co-founders of YSI and some of Ireland's leaders in social innovation. It is Sister Stan and Rachel Collier. Uh, ladies, 20 years is a long time. Rachel, how does it feel to see uh, previous classes of YSI all grown up and doing great things? It's really lovely to see them and to hear their stories, Zara. Um, I suppose that's why we do what we do, because we know from an early, when young people do it from an early age, it really does impact on their lives. I suppose I would have loved to have done Young Social Innovators when I was a teenager. Um, there just wasn't the opportunity. But to see these young people here today is just absolutely inspiring. It's incredible. And, and Sister Stan, did you think that 20 years ago it would have had the impact that it has on so many people? No, I didn't. I, I thought, um, in a way, uh, it was a dream. But dreams are important. And the dream has come true. Uh, 20 years on, Fehad Blianik Foss. And it's all due to the creativity of our wonderful young people and their educators. And one of the things, I suppose, important things that has happened over the years is that the teachers became so involved from a very early stage. I think that teachers go into schools and education because they want to educate. They're really interested in the development of young people. And I think they saw YSI as an opportunity to get young people involved with real life issues and to do something about them and to make a difference and to see results. So it, it's very much thanks to the, our great educators. When we started 20 years ago, the whole concept of social innovation was new. It wasn't even talked about. So social innovation education was very new. But I, we knew 
Rachel and I knew from previous experience that young people really wanted to become involved. They wanted to change society, really, to make changes, to make a difference. And they've done that. 20 years on, you Social Innovators is flourishing. So it's fairly and false. And now I think next fairly and it will be fairly and fair block. 20 years flowering. And I suppose none of us could have anticipated 20 years ago when all this started that this 20th year would possibly be one of the toughest years, Rachel, really, for the young people and for the schools. But it just goes to show nothing that happened this year has deterred them. They have pushed on through all of this. A huge credit to the students and teachers this year uh, for what they've achieved. I mean, nearly three and a half thousand teenagers continued with their YSI projects this year, even though they were separated from their teachers and even though they were working from home mainly this year, they've only just come back to school. So, and also thousands of them made speak out videos um, and, and enabled us to show everybody what uh, the Young Social Innovators teams are doing. So I think it's a huge credit. Um, it's such an achievement um, that we have so many social innovations this year. We need innovation more than ever before, I would think. We need to change how we think, how we think about things, how we live, how we do things. Um, we need to live more sustainably. So I think um, it's a credit to everybody who's involved, but we need social innovation education now more than ever before. And ladies, dare I ask, what does the next 20 years look like for YSI? You may dare ask, because it's a really good question. As Stan said, um, we'll be flowering in the next 20 years. Uh, we're This year, 20 years, we're very proud of what we've achieved so far in social innovation education. And not only is it in Ireland, but we have, our programme is uh, working with our partners in Lebanon and Zambia and Sweden as well. And um, they are doing, young people in our, and teachers in those countries are doing our programme. We're also delighted that the government has committed to extend social innovation education to all post-primary schools. And with that in mind, and with the help of Tomer Trust and the Department of Education, we have a team of local leaders right around the country now who are building up um, communities that will support social innovation and youth-led social innovation in particular. Um, so we're really uh, delighted at the outcome so far of that, and it's going to continue on. And this is how social innovation education will expand um, in Ireland and beyond Ireland. It's not just about students and it's not just about the teachers. It's about whole sectors getting behind this, whether it's businesses, local authorities, public sector, the community sector, everybody enabling young people to do social innovation and to make change. Absolutely incredible. And uh, there's a particular group of people that you'd like to acknowledge today, Sister Stan, isn't there? Yes, indeed. I mean, the teachers have played such a vital role in the development of young social innovators. Um, I think uh, that it's unbelievable how well and they took to the whole idea in the beginning, but have continued with the work, especially this year, as Rachel has mentioned. Uh, so they are really the superheroes, the superpower, uh, and they've done remarkable work. And over this year, particularly, there were over 250 teachers who were trained as guides in, for social innovation education. And so I want to thank them particularly for the work they've done. And since the beginning, we have trained over 2,000 teachers to give them guides, and they've done wonderful work. So today I want particularly to congratulate the guides who will be receiving awards for five years and some for 10 years as social innovation guides. So I wish to congratulate them, and we're delighted to present them with, with a brooch, which was designed by John Rocker, um, and which is the symbol of youth, the symbol of hope, hope and young people. Absolutely. Thank you so much, guys, and absolutely deserved as well. Thank you so much to Sister Stan and Rachel for being with us here today. The teachers being recognised for their five-year contribution to YSI this year are Lisa Kelly from Colosh to Breed in Clondalkin, Caroline Concannon from Colosh to Ciaran in Athlone, 
Amy Lee O'Brien from Cray College in Gorey, Emma Hamilton from Gorey Community School, Lauren Comer from Mercy College in Coolock, and Jane Carty from Ursline College in Sligo. And our two teachers who are receiving their 10-year participation award are Denise Mulheron from St. Mary's Secondary School in Ballina, County Mayo, and Derville Keyes from Loretto Secondary School in Letterkenny, County Donegal. Congratulations to all of you. And we are now going to meet our 10-year awardees. Thank you, Denise and Derville, for joining us. Uh, ladies, 10 years between both of you. You facilitated 36 projects for 461 students. You must be exhausted. I'm going to start with yourself, Denise. What's been the standout moment for you over the last 10 years? Well, I suppose over the last 10 years, when I think about it, um, there's been lots of moments that have been really enjoyable. Um, and one of my very first projects was Baldy Locks and the 29 Hairs. And um, that was a Nepisha, alopecia awareness project. And it, just even the way it started, we were in class and we were trying to brainstorm. And one of the girls just said, Miss, I have alopecia. And she explained to us all about it. And the kid, the rest of the students were like, we'd love to support you and we'd love to create awareness. And they realized themselves that they, they didn't know everything about uh, alopecia. And it just went from there in the community, in the school. And it was just brilliant. And um, everybody got involved. And then there was um, another group called Bring Back the Beach, and they were amazing. And like that, it's just the way they start. It just, it's just so inspiring. And it's the students themselves that come up with the ideas. Um, and one of the girls, again, when the student says, Miss, you know, everybody should know how to do CPR. And um, and again, the students agreed and they went on this whole, they drove it. And within our school, all the students were um, got to learn how to do CPR in the town. They involved other schools and they even brought it to the doll. And, and they really did all the work themselves. And they contacted uh, Michael Lester and asked him, would he come along and support them when they spoke to the TDs? And I kind of didn't think much of it. And he was so kind. And up he, he arrives at the doll to the girls and he stood up and they gave their speech and everybody listened to them. And he said, you have to support these girls. And he said, this is wonderful and a wonderful project. And it was so inspiring to see what they achieved themselves. Um, and then other, like all of the, again, picking the projects, um, Deal With The Wheels was really good as well. That was about uh, wheelchair accessibility in our town. And that the way that I came as well as one girl literally just saying, Miss, I, I, every evening when I'm going home, I see a wheelchair user, you know, going out my road and it seems so difficult. And she just really, the empathy that she showed and she said, we have to, you know, could we not do something? Why is it like that for some people and so on? And again, they did a focus group with wheelchair users and they got people in the town to experience how it is to use a wheelchair in the school during the PE classes. And again, it just brought everybody, it, it gave a different view to our town and how it could be improved. And, um, and, and the last one, I suppose, and again, they're all good, uh, perfectly perfect YSI. They just, they rented out, a, well, they didn't rent out, a, a studio in town, when a, a lovely photographer gave them their studio and they gathered all the uh, students from different schools and they just did videos for teens and by teens. And they talked about issues themselves and what they thought about them. And they they do give be given a word and they just express their feelings on it. And it was lovely from Nash school kids to 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 first years to fifth years. And then they kind of educated themselves. Um, so, yeah, just it just just really inspiring the way they take an issue and they drive it and um, they want to make it make a change and, and create action around it. Absolutely. And it is actually that kindness and that compassion that comes from teenagers that we don't often hear about, actually. The drive that they have to do better for people within their communities, which is really at the core of the YSI values. Uh, for you, Derville, what's been that standout moment for you in the last 10 years? Well, I suppose, really, it's um, a lot of the same things that Denise has said, really. It's just the, the opportunity that the girls get to develop new skills and the use of YSA as a platform for their own ideas, you know, and it's it's all about them. And really, I feel like I only act as a facilitator for them, that it has to be um, their own ideas and how they push forward with it. And of course, the showcases in the past have been phenomenal and it's great to get a run up to Dublin for us from the whole way in, in Donegal. We were always very, very happy with that. And they loved the idea of meeting new people and connecting with others around the country and being able to do that, I suppose, online in the kind of social media world that they're in at the minute works really well as well um, for them. So there's 
there's so many standout moments. It's hard really to pick one. You know, it's it's a it's a wonderful organisation that gives them such an opportunity and a platform to really have their voice heard. And like you're saying, there's sometimes we don't hear the positive as much about um, our young people and how they are willing to push things forward and how they want their voices heard. And really, I feel that YSA offers them that in so many ways that it's it's kind of hard to just limit it. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm sure that some of their students are going, well, Miss, why didn't you name our one? Our one was the best and all. So you're after... Yeah, Controversial, Nick. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just stirring the pot a small bit. But uh, so um, this question to both of you. So do, do you see um, like much change in the issues that young people are identifying as important to them now as opposed to 10 years ago? Um, I suppose every year that's the whole you know, you come in, you start your class, you go through, uh, oh, we go through all the different issues and yeah, all the time it's changing and it's very current. They're very current and they're so informed. They're so inspiring. They teach me like personally on things I don't know um, about and we research it and they're very passionate and, um, and yes, definitely the issues have changed so much over the years. Yeah, 100%. And so what is it that keeps bringing you both back? you know, to, to, to do it. Well, I suppose it is the, the kind of idea that with every new cohort of students, they have um, new things to say and they bring something um, completely new to maybe even a topic that has been um, investigated before, but it's a, it's a new voice, it's a new idea, it's a new eye on, on something that remains current, as you say. And I would find, to be honest, there's quite often quite some much a lot of similarities coming up in the topics that the girls are we're in all girls school and there's a lot of topics that remain consistent over the years but the way they approach them are different and the opinions and thoughts and issues they have within that particular topic can be different so although there are changes it's amazing to see that over the years not a lot has changed that young people still are concerned about the same issues are still willing to put themselves forward and to have their voice heard about things that they are looking at within their own school community, their own homes and society overall. So it's a, it's a real mix um, for me. It is, and it's that making a difference in your community while also making memories, isn't it? And it's teachers like you guys who are going to be to the forefront of those memories because you've made a real impact on their lives. So we want to thank you for your contribution and congratulations on marking 10 years. It's much appreciated by everyone here at YSI. I know it's certainly appreciated by your students as well. Congratulations and thanks for joining us, ladies. Thanks so much. Thank you. I think going forward, people should appreciate the little things in life. We think after all this, people should be more kind and think about what you say or post because you never know what someone's going through. Don't pollute the earth, easy as, and be kinder to people because it doesn't kill to be kind. And um, probably put more re funding and research into stuff that will help prevent further catastrophes like COVID. Everything that has happened uh, during COVID-19, I just hope people learn how to be a lot cleaner. Coming up, 33 finalists competed this week for the coveted YSI Challenge and Title Awards. They've met the judges, the judges met them, and I know for a fact they were blown away by what these teams managed to do during such a difficult year. Here's a look at the award categories that this year's teams are competing for. So now we've arrived at the first of our award announcements and we're going to begin with the Spotlight Category Awards. These awards recognise teams who have demonstrated excellence within a particular area and this year two new awards have been added to the Spotlight themes. A new award in 2021, the School Community Impact Award, recognises teams that have made a significant contribution to improving the lives of people in their school. Here are the contenders for this award. And the winner of this award in 2021 is Fight for Sight St. Mary's CBS Port Leash in County Leash. Congratulations, guys. Well done. 
Also new in 2021, the COVID-19 Innovative Response Award recognises teams that have taken creative action against issues caused as a direct result of COVID-19. The contenders for this award are... And the winner is Task Namask Kalosh de Errol in County Monaghan. Congratulations. The YSI Social Media Award is presented for the best use of social media platforms to raise awareness for an issue or a cause. The contenders for this award are... And the winner is... The Connected Four, Clarny Community College, Clarny in County Kerry. Congratulations, guys. Absolutely amazing work. The YSI Fundraising Award recognises teams that have brought awareness to an issue or raised funds for a cause in a particularly innovative or creative way. This year's contenders for the Fundraising Award are... And the winner is... Poverty is 24-7. Gail Kaloshta on Clore, Ennis, County Clare. Congratulations. Worldwide Global Schools are the partner to this next award. The Global Citizens Award is presented to a team that promotes global solidarity and recognises that we are all part of one large global family. The contenders for this award are... Let's find out from Worldwide Global Schools who the winner is. And the winner of YSI's Global Citizens Award, as sponsored by Irish Aid's Worldwide Global Schools, is Cork Educate Together Secondary School for their project, End Direct Provision. Congratulations on a fantastic project. Virgin Media are the partners to this next award, also brand new in 2021. The Digital Innovators Award recognises teams who have used digital technology in an innovative way to address a social challenge or teams who have successfully addressed an issue related to digital health and well-being. Let's take a look at the finalists in this category. And now, to find out who our winner is. I'm delighted to announce the winner of the Digital Innovators Award supported by Virgin Media. Team Red Flags from Mercy Secondary School, Tralee in County Kerry. I'm also delighted to announce the highly commended winner for the Digital Innovators Award supported by Virgin Media. Team Connected Four from Killarney Community College in County Kerry. Well done to both teams. Now, before we move on to our Challenge Awards, we have a very special visitor who wants to congratulate all of you who took part this year. I'm delighted to be here to congratulate each and every one of you, the young social innovators of 2021. I'm always impressed when I hear about young social innovator teams and your work all over Ireland on so many issues every year. This year, I see many of you have focused on well-being particularly in response to COVID-19 and the widespread impact it has had on all our lives. It is wonderful to see so many of you reaching out to both older and younger members of our communities to ensure they feel connected and cared for during this unprecedented and challenging time. You have also addressed other important issues, including racism, gender equality, biodiversity, sexual consent, online safety, and rural regeneration. Many of the challenges we face, including social isolation, physical and mental health, poverty and discrimination, have been magnified by the pandemic. You have created outreach campaigns, education materials, and you have invented new products. I was particularly impressed to see the wide variety of videos created as part of the Speak Out virtual tour this year. Given the times in which we are living, it is also very encouraging to see a new award category for the application of technology for social good and digital well-being. Government is acutely aware of the role young people can play in contributing to and delivering on policies that improve our society. As we move forward, we need your input, involvement and engagement to give us the best possible shot 
at a fairer future for all. This is reflected in our recently published rural development and volunteering policies, both of which have a focus on you as young people. We want you actively participating and shaping your communities. We want you to be leaders in the advancement of our social, economic and environmental well-being, to contribute and to challenge. For many of you, your involvement in this programme is the first step in a journey of active participation and volunteerism. And I sincerely hope it will remain a lifelong activity. I know most of you have been linking into school remotely for a large part of this academic year and that this has been a particularly difficult time for you, your families, your friends and your teachers. Yet through it all, you still continue to care about and contribute to your communities through your YSI projects. You have already achieved a lot and you deserve to be proud of yourselves. All of your innovations are making a difference and bringing about positive change in communities right around Ireland on important issues. As Taoiseach, I want to thank each of you for the contribution you are making. It is really important work and I sincerely hope you will continue to innovate on the issues you care about, not just this year, but throughout your lives. We need creative minds like yours and people who are willing to tackle issues head on, coming up with creative solutions and driving change. As a former teacher, education has played a huge part in my life. And today, I'd like to say a huge congratulations to your teachers and YSI guides. Over 250 of you have helped, supported and encouraged these young people this year. It has, of course, been a very difficult time for you too. You have enabled and empowered young people to do their best for others in very challenging times. And I thank you for that. Young Social Innovators is 20 years old this year. It set out with a big vision that Ireland's young people could be inspired, empowered and equipped to change the world for good. It has pioneered social innovation education, not only here in Ireland, but out across the world, embracing schools in Zambia, Canada, Lebanon and more recently Sweden. It continues to prove that through social innovation education, we can empower young people to take your place in society and use your voices, insights, talents and learning to shape a better and fairer world. Our programme for government commits to further expanding access to social innovation programmes to all post-primary schools. And I'm pleased to see that the Department of Education and other departments are working closely with YSI to make this happen. Congratulations and well done to each and every one of you. Go to Mila Mila Mahagwiv Galer, Agus Gunai Roig and Talev. Thank you, Antishok. It was great to have you here today. Now, we'll move on to the first of our challenge awards, and these awards are being presented under the People Innovation Pillar. First up, under the theme of health and well-being, supported by the HSE Healthy Ireland Initiative, we have the Make Our World Healthier Mental Health Award. A large number of teams addressed the issue of mental health this year, which is not surprising given the year it has been. Let's take a look at some of the shortlisted teams in this category. And let's find out who the winner is. The winner of the Make Our World Healthier Award, the Mental Health Award supported by the HSC for their widespread work in their local community and the creation of an innovative wellbeing calendar is Peace of Minds from Loretto Secondary School in Letterkenny in Donegal. Congratulations. Also under health and wellbeing and supported by the HSC Healthy Ireland, we have the Make Our World Healthier Physical Health Award. Let's take a look at the shortlisted teams in this category. And let's find out who the winner is. The winner of the Make Our World Healthier Physical Health Award, supported by the HSC, for their work to combat dangerous diets and unhealthy trends promoted on platforms such as TikTok, is TikTok's ideal body makes starving a hobby. From Eureka Secondary School in Kells, County Meath. Well done to the team. Highly commended by the judges in this category for their project to promote continued female participation and equality in sport. His same game, same fame. 
from Kolosh to Breeder, Clondalkin, Dublin 22. Congratulations. Supported by the HSE Sexual Health and Crisis Pregnancy Programme, the next award is presented for the Relationships and Sexual Health Challenge Award. Let's see who our finalists are in this category. And now to find out who the winner is. I am delighted on behalf of the HSC Sexual Health and Crisis Pregnancy Programme to announce the winner of the Relationships and Sexual Health Challenge Award for their work to educate young people about consent and sexual health awareness. As Consent Got You Covered, the Donna Hees Community School, Donna Mead, Dublin 13. Well done to you all. Under the theme of poverty, diversity and inclusion, this next award, supported by the Department of Social Protection, is presented for the Make Our Country More Inclusive and Poverty Free Challenge. Let's see who our finalists are. And let's find out who the winner is. Well done to all of the entrants in this year's awards. I'm delighted to announce that the winners of this year's Make Our Country More Inclusive and Poverty Free Award, supported by the Department of Social Protection, is Voices Left on the Street from St. Leo's College Carlow for their campaign to secure a women's homeless shelter in County Carlow. Congratulations. These next awards are being presented under the Communities Innovation Pillar and first up under the theme of Strong and Caring Communities, supported by the Department of Rural and Community Development. We have the Make Our Community Better Award. Let's see who the finalists are in this category. And now to find out our winner. The winner of the Make Our Community Better Award, supported by the Department of Rural and Community Development, for their project promoting rural regeneration of the Bearer Peninsula is Want the Best Come West from Bearer Community School, Castletown Bear, County Cork. Congratulations and well done. This next award is supported by the Department of Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth and is presented for the Make Our World a Better Place for Young People Challenge. Let's take a look at our finalist teams. And now let's see who the winner is. On behalf of the Department of Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth, I am delighted to announce that the winner of Make Our World a Better Place for Young People for their efforts in changing behaviours and raising awareness of the impacts of catcalling is Calling Out the Catcalling by Maryfield College, Jumkondra, Dublin 9. Congratulations. Still under strong and caring communities, we now move to the Make Our World Safer Award. Let's take a look at the finalists in this award category. And our winner is... Hi everyone, I'm delighted to announce the winner of the Make Our World Safer Award is the project team Road Safety in Carrig Navar, in Colossina Cree Nifa, Carrig Navar, County Cork. Fantastic achievement and congratulations to all of you. Under the theme of Fair and Equal Society, this next award is presented for the Make Our World Fair and Just Challenge. Let's see who our challenge finalists are. And now to find out our winner. I am delighted to announce the winner of the Make Our World Fair and Just Award for their work promoting inclusion and combating racism is race. Right attitude creates equality. From Largy College in Clonus, County Monaghan. Congratulations to everyone involved. This is a wonderful achievement. Corgulus B. Galeer. The judges also want to highly commend a YSI team in this category for their innovative work educating primary school children in a fun and age appropriate way about equality and diversity. Congratulations to the team Equality from Newtown School, Waterford, County Waterford, who are highly commended in this challenge. Well done, everybody. Corgulus D. Galea. 
This is the last of today's Challenge Awards and is presented under the Environment Pillar. Our finalists in the Make Our Future More Sustainable Challenge are... Let's find out who our winner is. Well done to everyone who's been involved in YSI this year. It's been a crazy year and you've all done amazingly well. It was great to see so many projects today and um, I'm very excited to announce the winner of the Make Our Future More Sustainable Award. So for their efforts to protect the environment by making recycling and composting more accessible in their school and local community, I'm thrilled to announce that the winner of the Make Our Future More Sustainable Award is Plant Get Enough of Compost from Dundalk Grammar School, Dundalk in County Louth. Well done to everyone who was involved in this award uh, and especially well done to Dundalk Grammar School. Going abroad, I want to go out and explore an adventure and see new things. I think I'm most looking forward to seeing my friends without having to worry about COVID and being able to go to social events safely. Looking forward to going abroad on holidays. I am most looking forward to enjoying life with my friends and finally enjoying the last few years of my teenage life. I'm re really looking forward when the restrictions die down so we're able to do a lot more things and even travel the world. I'm really looking forward to being able to go to concerts again. After COVID-19, I'm hoping to go out with my family to other countries uh, and to meet up with my friends. Of course, uh, it's going to be better for your mental health just to get out more, so I think people are just going to be happy to be more free once COVID has passed. Well, that brings us to the moment we've been waiting for and the announcement of the Bronze, Silver and Gold Awardees in 2021. This year, we had a panel of 18 judges from a range of different organisations, all friends to YSI. They had a really difficult job to do and they did amazing work. Here to speak on their behalf is the judges chair, Jerry Fitzpatrick. Well, you're very welcome, Jerry. A difficult task, I'm sure. Yes, there are uh, many great projects and, and such a difficult choice, but we got through it. So this year, the judging took place virtually. How did it all go? To be honest, the students were very ag agile and, and adapted really well. So we, uh, we had some great presentations. So, Jerry, are you ready to reveal our title award winners of 2021? Yes, absolutely. Are you ready, Dale? <laughs> I'm ready, Zara. Let's do it. On behalf of all of the judges this year, I'm delighted to announce the winners of the Young Social Innovators of the Year 2021 are as follows. In third place, receiving this year's Bronze Award for their project combating fast fashion and promoting sustainability through an innovative campaign in association with the NCBI is brand new to you, Colosh the Breed from Dawkins, Dublin 22. Well done to the team at Colosh the Breed. In second place, receiving this year's Silver Award for their project promoting safe cycling amongst young people in their community through an education and awareness program and the development of a prototype is Use Your Head, Use Your Helmet, the Abbey School Tipperary Town, County Tipperary. Congratulations to the Abbey School. And finally, in first place, receiving this year's Gold Award and the overall title of Young Social Innovators of the Year Ireland 2021 for their project educating young people on the signs of unhealthy relationships in order to keep themselves and safe and support their well-being and through the development of an innovative detect to protect campaign is Red Flags Mercy Secondary School Mount Talk to Lee County Kerry. Take a bow Mercy School Mount Talk. Congratulations to all our winners in 2021 and indeed everyone who took part in Young Social Innovators this year. I've certainly enjoyed being part of it. As of I, Zara, it's been an absolute blast. And thanks to you and your colleagues here at Virgin Media for making it so special. For more information on all of today's winning teams, check out youngsocialinnovators.ie. Have a brilliant summer, everyone. You deserve it. And we'll see you next year with more inspiring projects from young people changing the world for good. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you.